twenty thousand years ago glaciers moved across north america forming lakes unique in the plants and animals they supported in northwest pennsylvania there are a multitude of these glacial lakes in some amazing numbers of species coexist while in others invasive species and commercial development have had severe impacts on the balance of the ecosystem lake pleasant which has been carefully preserved by the western pennsylvania conservancy and its neighbors harbors an abundance of diverse life forms while at nearby lake edinburgh human activities have had serious repercussions on the health of the lake when you compare Edinburgh Lake with Lake Pleasant, um, water quality conditions and increase in nutrients in Edinburgh Lake causes excessive algae growth. And when you look at the, the lake in the summertime especially, it's, the water has a green, murky look to it um, as compared to Lake Pleasant, which is uh, very clear and uh, we get good sunlight penetration, a lot of native plants growing in the lake because of that but our nutrient levels aren't nearly as high because we have less impacts in the watershed um, from human sources. Lake Pleasant is one of a few lakes in the state where there's no motors allowed on boats, uh, electric or gasoline. So it's, it's largely used by canoers and kayakers and rowboats. Uh, a lot of fishing is done on both lakes. Uh, the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy uh, has worked throughout the larger French Creek watershed for almost 30 years. And we realized that Lake Pleasant was kind of the, the best remaining example of an intact glacial lake in northwestern Pennsylvania. We have purchased property around the lake to prevent it from being overly developed. We have worked with landowners. We've worked with uh, sand and gravel mining operations in the watershed to try to minimize impacts to the lake and really engage the, the local community in uh, appreciating the lake and, and wanting to protect it. Edinburgh Lake here has a lot of different issues that we're we're dealing with in biodiversity. We have a lot of farms along the area, uh, we have a lot of development on uh, two th around two-thirds of our lake here. Uh, development meaning uh, housing developments, uh, shopping malls that are coming in. The, so the land is being developed and we're, we're, our, we have to be concerned about sewage issues, septic tank issues, nutrients coming into our lake. Sometimes we can create enormous problems without even realizing it. Invasive species often come as hitchhikers from faraway lands hiding within different modes of transportation. In the 1980s, an invasive species known as the zebra mussel was introduced to the Great Lakes in the ballast water of ships from Europe. They spread quickly to other bodies of water nearby on the bottoms of boats and in bait buckets. Zebra mussels filter important microorganisms out of the lake which has a negative impact on fish. Our zebra mussels are one of our big areas of concerns with biodiversity in that they are growing at quite a fast rate. One thing interesting here is we, we take our lake down five feet every year, or the last couple of years, to more or less desiccate or freeze some of the zebra mussels early in the, uh, early in the fall. Uh, we're trying to keep their breeding population down. This area, if it wasn't lowered down, would be definitely covered with zebra mussels. And, Boy, uh, you don't see many, huh? Not no. on your walls? No, but That's if great. I go out five feet and bring up some stuff where the water wasn't lowered, I'm sure you'll, uh, we can find some. I think the biggest thing people need to keep in mind, um, if they use their boat on another lake or stream, they need to be careful. They need to make sure their boats are cleaned or dried for several days before they bring them to another uh, body of water, uh, like Lake Pleasant, where we don't have invasive species, um, to make sure that we're not introducing those species. Every little species has its own strength and also its own weakness. In order to be a strong ecosystem, flourishing 
uh, that can take minor fluctuations and major fluctuations, you need a lot of different species in there to counteract all those uh, fluctuations you have. You need a lot of different people to make a strong community. You need a lot of different uh, species in order to have a strong ecosystem.